we're going to look at an oil combination boiler. We're less on the burner side, so if you're watching this video thinking you're going to find why the orange lockout light comes on, uh, it's not going to help you on that. It's more about to try and stop people. Uh, you, as your apprentice, you look at it and there's so much going on, so you can't figure out what's what. It's all so compact, so hopefully this will give you more of an understanding of what's beneath this white box of bits. Today we're not going to be covering much of this because basically this is the burner to a boiler so that's completely separate for today that does its own thing so if that light's coming on the chances are it's either something to do with this or the fluid nothing to do with about i'm going to show you so that takes all that out of the equation this is off an older model but this is your thermostat that tell the pump and everything else how that burner you just seen what to do as you can see there's relays and a few switches if you're making breaks so but uh, and that's part of the flow switch that I'm about. It's an older model, but you'll see that in practice. But that's all your thermostats that actually control temperature and everything else and limit stats. So, but we're not going to look at that either. So that's the burner in place. So you can imagine that all whirling away and your flame coming down off that. Um, and then also there's all your controls, your stats. It's a newer model than what I've just shown you. Uh, and also you've got your expansion vessel, which obviously anything you heat up needs to expand. So that'll take the expansion an auto air vent but it's more of this lot that looks uh all complicated and you think well, what's going on there that i just wanted to see so grasp the basics of the boiler we're not going to it too much but hopefully this will help you understand and then you can layer up your knowledge the diagram i'm about to show you we're going to take this out of the equation and we're going to split these two apart these are actually separate so here's your heat exchanger and there is basically your domestic hot store but it's not fresh water so do not think this is like a cylinder it's not it's still the same dirty central heating water here as what's in here so that's what a lot of people can't get their head around but basically because your flame is not like a gas flame fully modulating it can't absorb as much heat instantly you need this buffer to give you tremendous hot water flow rates i know what you're thinking it still looks complicated in there so let's break it down with the diagram As soon as the boiler gets demand, it will then start heating up the primary heat exchanger. This heat will then be pumped out the primary heat exchanger. It will get to the diverter valve where it will make a decision whether you've put it on heating or hot water. Now, if they're both on together, the hot water will dominate. This little buffer tank really wants to be up to temperature to enable the hot water to work properly. Any movement of water is detected by the flow switch. So this will make sure that it dominates hot water even if the heat is on. So it all goes, all its power to the hot water. The water will then move through the hot water plate to plate heat exchanger and absorb the heat from the dirty central heating water into the coal mains. And this will give you hot water instantly. Now that some of the heat's been extracted out of this water, it's going to be passed through the secondary heat exchanger through the flue gases to absorb a bit more heat and drag the flue gases down further to help condense. This water is then returned to the primary heat exchanger to be reheated for the whole process to start again. Now the heating can be turned up. The diverter valve will now move over to the heating position and now all the flow will go through the radiators. If the hot water's opened up in any stage in this, it will go back to doing your hot water. But then once it's cooled off, it returns back through like a brass T piece. It then goes through the secondary heat exchanger again. It's then returned back to the primary heat exchanger to start all the process again. Now to look at this in a real case, this is the pipe that comes out your primary heat exchanger. So there's your central heating pump. This will then be pumped along to your diverter valve where it has a choice to go down to your hot water buffer tank or it will carry on through your radiators. It will go off, that's your flow going off there where the arrows is. It goes off to some radiators in the other room. And then here's your return pipe. That pipe goes off there to a filling link. Uh, it comes back in here through this T-piece, which is just a T, I, I, I presume they can set it. It then goes up into your secondary heat exchanger. Now this will drag your flue gases down and help the boiler condense. Uh, and then once that's done, it will pop back out and it will go back down to your primary heat exchanger along here, ready to be reheated. Now on the hot water mode, it still comes out your primary heat exchanger, same route through the pump. Now obviously here it will be in the hot water position and it goes down to this buffer tank here, which basically heats up the whole tank. 
it will actually come back out the buffer tank now to run parallel with the coal mains in the plate to plate heat exchanger uh, parallel with it not quite like the diagram showed but so the two waters there will just extract the temperature into the coal mains and the return water will go back into the secondary heat exchanger to then return back to the primary heat exchanger just straight through so here you'll have your coal mains flow so this is cold and you'll see it come along here and then basically you'll see the flow switch that's when it's triggered uh, and then it will go along and extract the heat through the plate to plate heat exchanger uh, and then simply come out the other side and be toasty hot